I've always wanted to be a teacher since I was a little girl. With my siblings, I was, I was bossy, and I pretended to be the teacher, so I was a teacher for five years in the downtown area. And then I decided to open a family childcare, and in a family childcare, it's a closer relationship with the parents and with the families. I get to know the details of every child. They would tell me in the morning, we communicate in the mornings, and when they get picked up, we are always in communication. Okay, bravo! My daily routine looks like um, I open my doors at 6 in the morning. I have to be in charge of the whole process, doing a lesson plan, working on the activities for the day. I do my payroll for my teachers and myself. I might be cleaning the bathroom, I might be changing diapers, uh, everything that comes along during, during the day. Like if I'm a mom, but with 12 children. So it's more work. <laughs> One of the things that I love about uh, Ms. Gracie is that she's willing to even reflect and say, how can I be a better teacher and how can I make these infants and toddlers experiences so much more the same way I try to do that with the preschool. Happy birthday! The kid is a happy birthday, I think. It's really important for uh, the children to be involved and not just with ABCs and numbers, but emotionally and socially get them ready for, for, for kinder. I have graduated about 350 children and some parents have come back and invited me for their quinceañeras and they told me she's number one in school. She did great during her school year, so that makes me really proud to know that they, are, they leave my, my home ready for, for kinder and to be successful in life. Seja FCC definitely deserves this award. I mean, it's amazing to see how she's progressed. I mean, I've been her coach for two years and I've seen how much she's done for not only for the children but for the community. So to see her progress and do so much, it's a blessing that she's here. Ha, ha, ha. Well, my name is Rima Solomon. I was born and raised in the city of Jerusalem. I, I was the first generation to come to this country looking for um, a chance for my family. So I decided to uh, just go with my kids, you know, to school and to learn as they are learning. And I really fell in love in the early child development and they, I, I start asking, how to uh, really value the first teacher, the parents. So maybe you can give it as a gift to grandma. Yeah? Very nice, I love it. My goal was this, like I want to establish something to encourage parents to get involved. I met with the Child360 coach. We decided to start the Parent Cafe and to share with them ages and stages and the power of yet transitioning to kinder and TK. I did a STEAM night with the parents. And uh, to conclude my study, we did a woodworking event at Home Depot. So, and parents said they are like now, okay, what's next? That they want to be involved more. I see the level of, you know, awareness and knowledge of their child skills right now. And then the feedback was like, okay, how, are you gonna host another one? And I was like, just slow down. <laughs> I tried to balance two jobs. I was still going to school, you know, to earn my AA degree. I had my family. It's, it's hard to talk about, you know, my daughter. And just after I finished my fall semester, she started feeling something in her neck. And after doing some testing, unfortunately, it came that she had a Hodgkin lymphoma. She was just 17. And when I got the message, I went back to my class. I was just crying and I'm between the children. I didn't want to scare them. I was like, 
I just want to share with you, my daughter is sick and Miss Rima is just worried. And one child came to me and she gave me a hug and she said, remember, everything will be okay. And we made it happen and she graduated on time and she's transferring to uh, you know, the university after. And that was really a big, big lesson. Sometimes, you know, big lessons in life, they come from, <laughs> you know, the babies that we have. And I love what I'm doing with them. I learn from them and they keep me humble in the room. And uh, in this field, we really, uh, we plant the seeds for future. With teaching, I realized how important it is to create a safe environment. There was a lot of instability in my early childhood. I was in between two homes for a while, between my grandparents and my parents, not knowing what's next, not having a, a regular routine. And I look back and I realize that in school, that was my safe environment. That allowed me to be a good student because I knew what was required and I knew how to go about my day and I think I had really good connections with my teachers. I want to recreate that. Okay, for today, I will just allow everyone to line up nicely as long as you guys are careful with each other doing that too. She's always um, demonstrated a willingness to help others, not just the children and the parents in her class, but also future leaders. My personal education has always been very important to me. I have my bachelor's in psychology. And that has been a great asset to me in my classroom. It also allowed me to help guide some of our other staff. And in order for me to be a good mentor, I have to have that background. And retaining good quality staff is always difficult. And I know that we're always having discussions of how do we retain staff? How do we build a good staff so that our kids have good qualified and experienced teachers? Yes, and why do you guys come to school? We do learn. We come to school to learn. I would love for there to be more of a focus to see how we can create livable wages where teachers can live at least comfortably so that they can focus on the things that are important to them, which is teaching and providing great experiences for our children. So Ethan, Ethan, can I help you make the puzzle? There's this big focus on making sure that the time we spend with the children is, is high quality. And one of the ways she does that is she gets down to their level, she listens to them, and she engages in dialogue. And uh, because of that, children feel very natural in approaching her. I've always been a firm believer that all children can learn. One in particular will always stand out. He had a very difficult time retaining information. It was a challenge sometimes, but when I created that one connection, when he looked at me, he knew what I was expecting and he knew he could meet it. And after that, his behavior was just completely different. He became engaged. He was excited about learning. He was excited about coming to school. And by far, he will definitely be one of those kids that it'll be years to come and, and I will think of his name and I will smile because he is one of my greatest success stories.